Hello and welcome. I'm Bob La Liberté from the Cube Research, and we're coming to you from the New York Stock Exchange. Today, I'm joined by Praveen Jain, the SVP and GM of the AI clusters and cloud-ready data centers for Juniper Networks. Welcome, Praveen. Thank you, Bob. Thanks for inviting me. Always great to have Cube alumni, so always great to have you back on. So, um, yeah, I think um, we're here to talk a little bit about AI. There's this thing, people have been talking about it a little bit here and there, so I thought it would be good to, um, to maybe have a little discussion around that. So, obviously AI is top of mind for a lot of customers. When we, every time we ask questions, right, top priority for networking, moving AI workloads, things like that, it's getting more and more interesting for organizations. You're talking to customers all the time about this and about AI. I'm wondering if you could share a little bit about what you're hearing from those customers about AI and how they're planning to implement a little bit. Very good. So, Bob, uh, there are some customers who are in early stages of AI yeah. deployment. So, for example, they want to deploy some document scanning similar to ChatGPT for their own documents. So, simple use, simple use cases like that. So, those are the customers are still in early phases. While we are dealing with the second type of customers who already know that their data privacy is a big issue. So, they do not want to take their data and source it to the cloud-based services. So they are already interested in building their own on-prem data centers because of data privacy or any other reasons they may have. So these are the customers who are in more advanced stages. They know that they have to build it, but even those customers are the customers who need help because AI is so new, right? Nobody knows how to operate this infrastructure. What is the right infrastructure? What is the performance? What's the cost it's going to uh, uh, bring to the table because GPUs are so expensive. So overall, customers are in uh, various stages of very early deploying some off-the-shelf applications to the uh, place where they know that they have to build their own infrastructure. Correct. Yeah, this is, it's a big transition, right? So AI really took off with sort of the consumerization, isn't it? With, right? Chat, GPT, things like that where it was all based in the cloud and consumers, anyone could use it. But as you shift and make that an enterprise tool and want to leverage that enterprise data, it's a different conversation, right? I remember in the first couple of weeks when ChatGPT was really making news and the, suddenly there were a lot of emails coming out saying, please don't put any confidential information exactly. on this tool. And hence the need for organizations to drive those AI infrastructures back on premises. So definitely can see that. And like I said, still early days, but organizations are are starting to make that that move and make that that move uh, to to start adopting and building out their own workloads. Okay. So, I mean, I guess one of the things that would be of interest to me is you know we hear a lot about uh, there's obviously AI for networking and all the AI ops, but what we're really going to discuss here more is about the networking for AI and how do we provide a network infrastructure that supports these AI environments because they're a tad different than maybe a normal networking environment. So I'm wondering if you could do a couple of things. I wonder if you could explain how these network infrastructures to support these, these AI workloads in the backend network are a little bit different and, and what role it plays in enabling AI. Right. So <clears throat> you know that these GPUs are very expensive resources. And these GPUs are communicating over very high bandwidth peer-to-peer -peer communication uh, uh, while training is going on. In the past, let me let me give, let me give you an example. I started my career in networking industry in 1990s. At that time, quality of service was a feature which was available, and everybody thought over the several years or decades, people thought it's just too complicated to implement quality of service. Just throw bandwidth at a problem. So what it means is. Let's say you were building at that time the networks of 10 gigabits uh, per second in nature. Maybe you throw 40 gigabit per second to the problem and you don't have to worry about it. But unfortunately, now we are at a stage these GPUs are requiring the bandwidth more than what network can support. Or what, what, what the, in, in other words, network and GPUs are going hand in hand with the capacity. Right. So you cannot now say that throw more bandwidth at a problem. Right. So in other words, 
how do you manage congestion in the network? Right. How do you optimize, uh, optimally load balance the traffic in the network? Correct. How do you react to the congestion in the network becomes very, very important. Because you don't want this where you started a job of training in the GPUs. After several days of training, now because of congestion or something else, your job fails. Right. Now, do you want to restart and waste all those expensive GPU cycles which you have already consumed over the last several days? Correct. No. You want, a, you want a network which is resilient, which is able to handle this automatically uh, while, you, while you focus on your business problem. You should not be worried about how network is behaving. Network should be able to automatically tune and recover from these failures. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. And, and the other thing that I find is interesting in these backend networks, it's although we're not just throwing bandwidth at it, we're throwing a lot of bandwidth at it. And yeah. it's, it's different from that perspective of, you know, we might have had one gig up to the top of rack, 10 gig over, 40 uplinks, et cetera, and moving on, you know, 10, 100, 400. Now you're talking about having 800 gig right from the get go right from the NICs through right through all tiers it's all 800 gig and like I said that's where that traffic management the congestion management ensuring that the data is always there to make sure that those GPUs usage is optimized because anytime you're not using it you're you're wasting money so to your to that point this is a lot more difficult right this is not something that the ordinary network engineer has run across an environment like this. It's even a little bit different from HPC environments, right? Which were running and had specific requirements. So obviously that's gonna be a challenge for organizations as well, just trying to figure out what it is I should be deploying and how to deploy it. Yeah, absolutely, well said. And that's what we are seeing with the customers. Yeah, no, absolutely. So Juniper's had an approach about AI native networking. And so I'm wondering if you could share a little bit about, you know, what that means to organizations uh, and how does it provide a solution for, for customers who are interested in AI? Yeah, so in Juniper, uh, since the missed acquisition, what we have done is we rolled out uh, operations simplification for the network. So in other words, we, use, we are already using AI as part of MIST and Marvis solution, completely right. Marvis solution, where um, any network problem, we are automatically uh, able to root cause, reduce the trouble tickets, and all of that, right? All, yeah. of that, uh, all of that operational simplification which came along with our MIST or Marvis technology. So we have taken the same technology and applied it to the data center. Yeah. Okay, so now it means if you are operating a data center, and I'm not yet talking about GPUs, let's say yeah. you are operating a regular, regular data center, Enterprise data center. Yeah. and you are having challenges today to operationalize things fail, trouble, uh, troubleshooting it and things like that, all of that we have um, uh, taken into account while uh, applying the Marvis technology to the data center. So same simplification, same trouble ticket reduction in data center, what you have been uh, already uh, 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 seeing from the Marvis technology. Okay. Now, let's talk about as you're building the GPU clusters. So GPU clusters, obviously you have to connect the GPUs. GPUs are also connecting to the storage to get the model or the data from the storage. So there's a, a connectivity from GPU to GPU, GPU to storage. Then there's also front-end network. How do you get to the servers and all of that. So it consists of complex set of resources. So Juniper, and this, this entire thing is called networking for AI. So in other words, you are creating the network for AI training or for AI inference. Right. So Juniper is leading the way even in that. So it's operational simplification for networks and also building the networks to train or inference uh, for, for the train or training or inference workloads in the network. Got it, got it. Yeah, that makes, that makes a lot of sense and obviously you're going to be focused. We had just done uh, some research recently, uh, both the Cube Research in collaboration with ZK Research, and we found one of the, the interesting stats was that I think 59% of the organizations, enterprise organizations, said they would prefer to have Ethernet, right? Because that's a big piece. So one of the things we haven't mentioned yet is part of these networks, there's also competing technologies in Finiband, and this is something we've seen over the years. There's always something competing with Ethernet, but yet Ethernet always seems to be coming out on, on top. And so we're seeing that a little bit here as well, but we are seeing organizations saying, we want to use ethernet because we've got 
We use it in the rest of our enterprise. Exactly. We've got all the skill sets. And oh, by the way, we also see a lot of the top hyperscalers are using Ethernet, right, to keep their costs down and so forth. So it's going to be, uh, I think, uh, certainly uh, a really great time for organizations to learn about the technology, to understand the benefits, to understand how Ethernet can provide uh, a significant performance and, and be able to optimize those GPUs and those back-end environments. Certainly things like the um, uh, the Ultra Ethernet Consortium and things like that that are working to deliver some of the technologies, you know, the, the Rocky II and things like that, et cetera, that are happening. So a lot of good things happening to enable organizations to be able to deploy those AI environments on-premises, in those on-premises data centers, in and mind. be able to share the skills and resources that they already have. Actually, uh, you process. stole all my talking points. So good <laughs> good news is, so good news is, you are an advocate of Ethernet, so I don't need to convince you. Correct. Right, but yeah. as you said correctly, Ethernet always wins. There's yeah. economics of Ethernet. There's a familiarity of Ethernet. Today you operate your uh, data centers, Ethernet-based data centers. Yes, there are differences. There are some congestion yeah. management that load balancing, but at the end of the day, it's pure Ethernet, right? Yeah. Yeah. And we are adding some ultra Ethernet capabilities into uh, 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 this new network, but you are familiar, right? So it's easy to operate that. But also from Juniper perspective, let's say you built a network where you connected your GPUs, the storage and front end, everything. Now the same question comes back how do you simplify operations of that network? Right. So now, coming back to my point, we have missed Marvis technology at a core, which we applied yeah. it to our regular data centers. Now we are applying it to our networking for AI solution. Right. So that's where the entire, uh, entire solution is catered towards simplification. Uh, because right now, a lot of customers I talk to, they're still talking about how to build they don't realize yet because they're early in the journey that soon the operations will become a challenge and Correct. they will require huge amount of manpower or uh, some uh, some end tools to manage the complexity of these networks. Yeah, absolutely. And that's where AI can play a significant role in, in driving those operational lifts. Exactly. Yeah, day, day two is always going to be harder to do than, than okay. setting it up. Uh, I also want to touch upon wait, a month or two ago, a couple months ago, where you rolled out some ops for AI. I'm wondering if you could talk about that a little bit as well. Oh, good. Uh, good that you remember that. We, just, <laughs> we were just talking about it uh, in our last event called Seize the AI Movement. So, you know, um, as I said, we are early in this uh, uh, journey, right? Uh, neither customers, neither, uh, neither uh, early partners, they understand how to build these networks, right? Some hyperscalers or cloud guys, they know how to build these networks, but not the enterprises if they want to build their on-prem. So what we did differently than any networking vendor in the industry is we built our own network. So I, I'm the guy who wants to do our hands dirty, right? When I'm just talking, right? Yeah. So we built our own network. In that network, we brought in NVIDIA GPUs. We brought in ecosystem partners like Veka Storage. Yeah. We brought in compute, we brought in other elements all together. Not only we built our network, but also we use that network to train the workloads. And we are the first networking vendor who went to the ML Commons, which is the uh, benchmarking authority yeah. and submitted our results okay. based on ethernet to this authority, right? So that's one part. Now coming back to Ops for AI. So now we have this network where we are promoting open ecosystems of GPUs yeah. from NVIDIA, AMD, Intel, whatsoever. Now this network is available to you as a customer. So what you can do is, let's say you want to do an early POC and want to see what exactly it takes to build such a network. You can schedule some time, you can bring your own workload. Actually. And if you're worried about the privacy or confidentiality of the data of your workload, you can bring a sample workload or yeah. we can give you some workload to try it out. Okay. In fact, we won deals against our competition based on customer's ability to use these networks, feel comfortable with it. it. And at the end, we also provided white glove service to them as part of our services offering sure. to, to build their network. Right, help right? them accelerate the adoption. Of the help network. them accelerate their adoption. So that's one part. So we have a lab as part of this initiative. Okay. You can schedule time. Second part is, 
as I was mentioning earlier, AI cluster is not just about network. It's not just yeah. about GPU. Yeah. It's about network, GPUs, storage, model, a, a, all the things running on your host. Right. So we have JVD approach, which is called Juniper Validated Design. That approach is not just about networking, even though we are a networking vendor, it's all about entire ecosystem tested together. Right. That's another differentiation, right? And that makes a lot of sense because in the real world, as they're deploying it, they're going to have all these pieces. Exactly. So being able to validate that prior to it being deployed is going to give organizations, I think, a, again, a sense of comfort that the technology is going to work. If it worked in the lab, it's going to work in there and fine. And then third piece is, um, as we were talking about the congestion and all of the congestions will happen, right? Because these are the networks, uh, the speeds of the network and the GPUs are kind of all at the same ballpark number. Wow. We are automatically monitoring congestion, auto-tuning this congestion using our Appstra management console, which is our intent-based platform. And we have demonstrated that you focus on your business problem while network is able to take care of congestion and load balancing and any such things which are happening underneath the network. Got it. So that's the ops for AI term we coined as part of our last event. Awesome, awesome, sounds great. Uh, yeah, and I, and I assume that also gives them the, also the end-to-end -end visibility and so forth. Oh, oh, oh right, yeah. All the way to the smart NIC and, and so forth, right? As part exactly of that right, exactly yeah. right. Awesome. Yep. No, that's great. So. We spent a, a bunch of time talking about the current solutions. I'm wondering and if you could maybe share a little bit without divulging anything top secret, a little bit about what you're, what you're planning for in the future. So again, giving practical example, we built our lab, Absolutely. our power circuit stripped because when we started training the workload, GPUs are power hungry. Correct. Um, other day, we had our sprinklers turned on because it was too hot or maybe some fire or whatever, right? So in short, point is, when you're building these networks, power and cooling, they're super, super, super critical. Right. right. So we are on one hand investing in technologies like CPO with Broadcom, yeah. and these are a bunch of acronyms, but think yeah. about this, that we are investing in technology so that optics do not consume so much of power. So whether okay. it's CPO, LRO, LPO, bunch of these technologies. Yep. And also in parallel, we are uh, investing in liquid cooling. Yes. So without these two technologies, um, the future data centers cannot survive the current circuits or the current cooling technologies you have. Yeah, it's certainly, like I said, it, when you think about the future, when you think about organizations deploying these networking for AI environments and these back end with GPU loaded, it certainly, it, it creates a challenge for organizations to remain sustainable. And it takes all of the sustainability efforts in order to be able to fit in some of those GPUs into your existing data centers, right? So it's great to hear though that you're doing and taking some steps to drive down and create those efficiencies wherever, wherever it's needed. Um, Listen, this has been a great conversation. I'm sure you and I could probably go back and forth here all day. Uh, unfortunately, that's that's all the time we have for today. So thank you very much for joining. And to all of those watching, thank you again for watching. I am Bob La Liberté from the Q Research, and we're coming to you from the New York Stock Exchange. Thank you. Take care. Thank you.